Hello and welcome to round 5 of the JM League 6 Weekly Recaps. This week saw the tournament enter the tail end of the bracket as only two rounds remain after this, meaning the matches only get more competitive. The beauty of Swiss. This round had a bunch of upsets and notables to offer, so without further ado, with round 5 at its end, let's take a look at what happened throughout the week. A battle between two of the newcomers to JM League 6. Elias Go is back this week with his hero, as well as Elias' almost forgotten Ridley from round 1. With his opponent Plamp being an equally prominent force in the mid-level of the league, this was sure to be a thriller of a set. Riley even opted to challenge Elias' hero with a hero of his own, but was ultimately defeated by a combination of luck and skill. However, luck wasn't enough to stop the Sora as Plamp clinched out the match in a close 3-1. If he lands a flak or a whack here, there's a chance. Yeah, yeah. But Plant's not giving him a moment right now. He's just all over him. Keep him in the air. Ooh, this is dangerous. He's, he just doesn't have time to rest, you know? Yep. You gotta find... Sometimes you have to wait, though. It's, you know, just their turn. Yeah. Wait till it's your turn and get back in. Turn base RPG. Oh, exactly. Oh, oh. okay. I, Plant's just... <laughs> nice. Oh, okay, okay. yeah, fair enough. Coming off of Horizon's, um, lengthy set last week, Harrison will be facing newcomer Helicon with Scott's signature Kirby. Utilizing Kirby's copy ability, Harrison got a taste of his own Rob as Helicon <coughs> him time and time again. After an intense back and forth, Helicon stuck to the Kirby franchise, switching to King DDD to seal out the game 5 and make this close upset. If they drive one spot so they don't go there, then cover another option with like the Yeah, that's afterwards. true. You can cover so much space like that, that's really smart. The icon is really how you want to stop though. 170 of the is Rob is the heaviest curve really you've ever seen. So, this is honestly like a really good position. What were you back to 80%? <laughs> oh my god, there we go. Yeah, like you got the stone. That's I want that what? That's the question of the day. I'm not answering that. I think as my co commentator, you have to. No. Like legally. I mean, you, I remember that one time you didn't answer me, yeah. Okay, but that was. <laughs> <laughs> By, by the way, side note, yeah, yeah, uh, that back air is kind of frame 6, so what do you think, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> there we go! Oh, oh almost slipped it. Epic's Kazuya Mishima is looking as scary as ever, but Jordan would have to deal with Banana and his high octane cloud, and they weren't going to go down without a fight. Logan utilized Cloud's sword to keep Jordan and his Electric Wind Godfists at bay, showing a dominant performance against the Mishima. After losing the first two games, Epic made a switch to his signature Little Mac, managing to win a game and gain some momentum of his own. However, Logan was quick to adapt and steal it at Game 4 with a wall of back airs to finish off the set. <laughs> but Liv Limit and Rage Driver are about to both be online. They're both at kill percent. At the same hit that they came Literally online. the uh, same hit. Dude, it's... Oh, oh, and the shield pokes! The shield pokes! Oh my god, is that it? No, he's recovering. Jordan's good at those. KO punch online. A couple Until. more hits and he'll start killing. KO punch! Got him! Got him! <laughs> yeah, using the super armor. Oh my gosh. Forced to use the upbeat. No! Cal oh. He probably could have made it back with an air dodge, but the down smash is too it much of a threat. Yeah. The wall jump was definitely a good play there. And now, unfortunately, Logan is behind, so he can't really pop oh off camp. But the smash catching yeah. the shot. I am loving how Jordan is playing this stuff, though. He's choosing his opening so carefully. Yeah. Ooh. That's that's no no it's Jordan. It's Jordan. No, that's oh my god. I'm telling you, man. It's Jordan. That's, that's it. Dead. That's it. Yeah. Oh. The highlight upset of the round. If last week was any indication, things weren't boding well for Marcus here. Having dropped the Sheik, Marcus went entirely with the Aegis for this set, as Minty would take her Joker for this run back from JM League 4. Like their last exchange, this set also went back and forth, both players showing great adaptation between games, but the pivotal moment was Sarah's win in Game 3, giving her the counterpick advantage when Marcus brought them to a Game 5. It was here that Minty pulled out her trump card, the Ganondorf. 
Try as he could, Marxist just couldn't escape the clutches of the King of Evil as Sarah capped off the match in a JML Classic Ganon side. Will be very soon though, Pyro packs a massive punch, gotta watch out. Oh. Yeah, that's the, um, oh, oh there geez, we go. and off stage as well. That was, I think throughout the games, Marxist hasn't really been, hasn't like changed his playstyle much. Oh wow, oh, what the <laughs> Still that got was, it on the ground. Yeah. That was like a bit beyond roll distance and just kind of throwing out that lightning bus still. Yeah. Oh, oh, great catch. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Joker's a character you really want to land on. Yeah. Yeah, dude, this is crazy. I can't believe she managed to get that. That was so oh, good. It'll happen. <sighs> well, we're trying to punish that air dodge again, but the F tilt. Oh, oh wow. Didn't even, oh need the didn't even need the spike. Just killed off the side. Up until that point, it would have been fine. That was, that was just, I guess, the up tilt spook factor. Yeah. Unfortunately. And knowing Sarah, she really didn't want the up tilt. Or maybe she did. I don't know. Maybe it's a really good way to, to deal with uh, Mithra side B. What was she cooking? But... Oh, oh, that's dead. No! Oh, wow. What a way to finish it off. A run back from Jame League 5. Last time, Taiwan Yu took this convincingly 3-0, but it wasn't as easy this time for Yu. Changing up his roster a bit from last season, Yu has dropped the Sephiroth for Wolf and a surprise Incineroar, while Jelly has stuck with her signature Kirby. Jenny's training and dedication paid off, taking you to an extremely tense Game 5, making excellent use of Kirby's offstage potential and combo game to keep the set competitive. However, you managed to triumph with his great fundamentals, putting him on a score of 2-3. Okay, okay. slowly racking up some damage. I mean, it's, the earth is very much on Jelly right oh, now, and not big as the safe now. Alright, back to neutral. Yes, it yeah. seems like you was just like throwing out moves at this point. Ooh, oh, I smash. Oh, oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, oh, all right! Jelly with the comeback, so sir. Yeah, just slightly missing out. Yep. That is what we're doing. Well, doesn't choose to get it. Ooh, oh, and smash. the smash attack just okay. right into it. Ooh, oh, and, and another great. air smash finishes it off. She still, she lives? Yeah. Damn, we got a couple of people here yeah. with us. Nice, nice. nice. And, and yeah, the back kill. air. Just okay. okay. Well, I mean, look. tower has got the rage. Yeah, I mean, Jelly's got, like, the a fairly good percentage <laughs> lead on this. Like, looking pretty tall. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, oh, okay. Nice. Oh, uh, boss is going to take the more damage. Oh, those right. trades are killed. Is that dangerous yeah, percent now being at 142? Oh, dash, dash attack. attack. Oh, yeah. That's oh, oh, right. unfortunate. You know what? Drinkwater's been having many close calls lately, and today would be no exception for James, bringing out yet another new character. Sample put on an excellent display in this match with his Ness. And despite going down 0-2 against the league's 13th seed, Sam made an impressive comeback to force a Game 5 after James decided to try out his Toon Link and Wolf. This didn't end up going as planned, however, as Sam's Ness held strong. In the end, James pulled out his trump card, creating the Me Swordfighter? Whatever it takes, I guess. And barely managing to take game five. Hey, oh! Can he get it? No, 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 Okay, oh okay. My. Oh, this is so close! Both of them can just die oh, in no. a second now. Alright, uh -oh. both death, but uh -oh. death percent and uh -oh. die. Uh -oh. Nice. Oh! No! Well, good comeback on that last stock. It was down for most of that game. If results were anything to go by, Visual would be fairly comfortable here as Josh's opponent was on a lower score than him. That being said, you can't underestimate Aethera and his Lucina. Ritvik had been preparing for this match and it paid off as he put off some impressive ledge traps and edge guards, forcing Josh to play exceptionally well. In the end, however, the JML protege managed to hold onto his final stock and prevent a game 5 from occurring. Just being able to um, throw out those edge guarding options. Order. 
nice Good timing tech there. Chase. Oh, nice oh, is that hill. dead? Yes, it yes. is! Oh, yep. Oh, nice high up B. He's been doing a lot of these high up Bs. Um, I mean, I think it's just to catch Josh sleeping at ledge. Yeah, fair enough. It is a little bit dicey yeah, though. Counter, because, dead. Yep. That's uh, Dunzo's. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. That's dicey. Oh. That's a bold side B. They're both at death percent now. Both of them just need one decent interaction. He's gone to the he's gone to Mithra. Uh Pyra. No, the Mithra. Yeah. Names. Oh, not dead yet. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh no, it's dead! No! His jo DI! Oh Josh just clutching that out. The highlight notable of the round. Jezza PJ's Meta Knight has been going as strong as ever this season, Jeremy only losing once, but Remora and his Pac-Man were up for the challenge. Jezza would find himself forced into a prolonged war of attrition as Jerry proved much harder to edgeguard than most. After a super long back and forth set, this was closer to a chess match more so than a game of Smash. But it was ultimately Jeremy who lasted longer to take out this mentally draining battle. It's just staying in the end, not falling for it. This is so scary for both of them. That hydrant could have been it right there. Good retreat. Oh, and the F smash! I think he got stuck on the hydrant. Oh, and that's it! That was really nice. Hashtag me. Yeah. That was clean. Dude, what is this big brain lead trapping? Gets hit, but ooh, and the falling back end, not quite. Tried to snuff out like a hasty approach there, but good recognition on Jeremy not to hold in against that, and that back end should take it. Yeah. Mm. Game two to Jezza PJ. Dude, that dimensional kick could have actually taken it. Yeah, with like max rage. <laughs> and oh, the hydrant! Up boots a hydrant! <laughs> and it says the hydrant up boots and catches it. What is this set? There's a minute 30 left in the clock. Oh my god. Wow. Look at that angle that went up this shit. Yeah, show. like. I feel like he would have gone more of that. The bread and butter, yeah, probably. Because he normally gets, I think, two fares out of it, and he only got one there. Oh, is that it? No. Uh, not yet. Ooh, catches it, yeah. That's it. Did he go uh, above the ledge there? Or? Yeah, he went above the ledge. To catch up on all the action, be sure to check out the JM League YouTube channel to see all the VODs from this round. Here are the new pairings for round 6. And here are my top 5 sets to look out for, so make sure to catch them if you can. Mars vs Gal P, Rare vs Banana, Spooky vs Drinkwater, Liz vs Sample, and Neon vs Big Big Chungus. And that's been everything for this round of JM League 6. Thanks for making it this far! Leave a comment down below for who you're excited to see this season, and subscribe to the channel to catch when the VODs drop for the upcoming round. See you next week!